angel's visit. Mary was a beautiful young woman. She lived in a town called Nazareth and was engaged to marry a man named Joseph. One day, a tall and handsome man appeared in front of Mary. His clothes were a brilliant white. His hair was dark and curly, and his eyes sparkled like lights. Mary knew the man must be an angel. Hello, Mary. God is with you. Mary stepped backward. Her, his deep voice scared her. Don't be afraid. God sent me to tell you that you are going to have a baby who will name Jesus. He is going to be very important to many people. A son, but I'm not married yet. How is this going to happen? The Holy Spirit will come to you. So your son will be the Son of God. The Son of God? My son? Mary thought about all these things. It didn't seem possible, but she believed anything was possible for God. I'm God's servant, and I do whatever, and I do whatever God says. But her mind was racing. What will Joseph think? Would he believe her? Mary was nervous. When Mary told Joseph about the angel and about giving birth to God's son, he did just what she was afraid he would do. He didn't believe her. He talked about not marrying her anymore. Mary felt so sad, but she remembered what the angel said and she trusted God. The next day, something wonderful happened. Joseph came to her and said, An angel came to me and it came. He said, Joseph, don't be afraid to make Mary your wife. She is going to have a son and you're going to and name him Jesus. He's going to save people from their sins. Mary smiled, a big smile. She was so happy that tears of joy filled her eyes and trickled down her cheeks. She felt Joseph's love again. I am not scared for you to be my wife, Mary. I will be with you and we will name the boy Jesus. Hello everyone and welcome back to Virtual Sunday School for December 6th. Before we talk about our Bible story, I have our Advent wreath set up on the table so we can light the second candle. Please watch this video where we talk about the second Sunday of Advent. Last week was the first Sunday of Advent, and we lit the first candle on our Advent wreath, the candle of hope. This is the second Sunday of Advent, and it's time to light our second candle on our Advent wreath. The second purple candle on our Advent wreath represents preparation. Just as we get our homes and churches ready for Christmas, we also get our hearts ready for baby Jesus. So what are some things that we do to get ready for Christmas? Justin, what are some things we do? Well, what we do is we make a Christmas tree. Mm -hmm, right, we put it up and we decorate it? Yeah. Mm -hmm, that's right. And what else do we do to get ready for, for Christmas? We set up those things. What are they called? Our Christmas village? Is that what you mean? Yeah, we set up our yeah. Christmas village underneath the tree? Right. So I'm going to light our first two candles. Mark chapter 1 verse 3 says, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Pre Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. John the Baptist, or Jesus' cousin, spread the word that Jesus was on his way. Part of our preparations for Christmas can include letting other people know what Christmas is all about, the birth of our Savior. Let us pray that God will bless our preparations for Jesus' arrival. Dear Lord, help us to prepare for the coming of, the, of Jesus into our hearts and homes. Remind us, O oh Lord, to share the good news of our Son with others. Amen. Amen. Wow, today is the second Sunday of Advent, and we lit the second candle on our Advent wreath, which is the candle of preparation. 
We are preparing for Jesus' birth, but did you ever stop to think how Mary and Joseph prepared for Jesus to be born? Today's Bible story tells us how Mary and Joseph found out that Mary would be having a baby. So who told them? Who told them? An angel. An right. angel. Yeah, that's right, an angel. Our Bible story is from the book of Matthew in the Gospel. Matthew's Gospel was written nearly 2,000 years ago. You can find the book of Matthew at the beginning of the New Testament. The story talks a lot about angels. Do either of you know what angels look like? Justin, what do you think an angel looks like? They have wings mm -hmm. and they can fly. Okay. <laughs> Good job. All right, Anthony, what do you think angels look like or what do they have? They can help souls and they can have those, what are the wings called? A halo? The halo, a halo. The halo above their head? Do you think they might glow? Wait, H. A L O. That's right. Do you think they might glow? Mm. Well, they glow yellow. But so you, you think so? And do you think that um, they only wear white, or they wear something else? White. They might. They might wear white. Okay. So, what do angels do? You said something. What do the angels do again? They help people. So they might help people, right? Do you, any anything else that they might do? They might help people with their sins. Okay, so in the Bible, angels watch over people and share important messages from God. In today's story, we heard about an angel named Gabriel. Gabriel appeared to Mary and Joseph to tell them that Mary was going to have a baby. And who was that baby again? Um, Jesus. Jesus. Right, that was Jesus. Let's watch this short video that retells the story about Mary and Joseph. The story of Christmas, Mary and Joseph. This is Mary. Hi! You see, Mary was the mother of Jesus, but before that happened, she lived in the town of Nazareth. Mary had no children because she lived according to God's law <laughs> and had never been married. Oops! But she was engaged to marry a man named Joseph. Hey, -oh. Hi, Joseph! One day, an angel came to Mary and said, Hi. Ah! That God had chosen Mary. The angel said, God is with you. But Mary was afraid and confused. Huh? She wondered what the angel was talking about. Then the angel said, Don't be afraid. God loves you and wants to use you in a great way. Uh, me? You will give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great, and he will be the king forever. Uh, hold on. Mary asked, but how can this happen? For she was not married yet and knew that she couldn't have a child until she was married. But the angel told Mary that the Holy Spirit would make her pregnant. Wow. So that the baby born will be holy and will be called the Son of God. Wow. The angel reminded her that nothing is impossible with God. So Mary decided to trust God and all that he had planned for her. Before their wedding, Joseph found out that Mary was pregnant. Wait, what? He thought she had done something wrong. Uh. But Joseph was a man of God and decided to break off the engagement quietly so no one around town would think badly of Mary. While Joseph was thinking about all this, an angel appeared to him in a dream. Oh, uh, hi? The angel said, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Uh, why? The angel explained that Mary's baby was from God. Wait, what? The angel told Joseph that the baby's name would be Jesus, and he would save his people from their sins. Oh, wow. <laughs> And when Joseph woke up, he did as the angel told him. Uh, hi. You right? Really? Yeah! And took Mary as his wife, while she was still pregnant with the Son of God. And so Joseph and Mary trusted in God, and the two followed the plan that God had given them to help bring the Savior into the world. 
today's Bible story is mostly about Joseph, Jesus' earthly father. Joseph found himself in a very unusual and confusing situation. When Joseph first heard Mary's news, he was upset. He probably felt pretty alone. But God has a way of getting messages, messages to us to remind us that we are never really alone. How did Joseph feel after the angel visited him? Did he feel better or worse after he talked to the angel? Better. He felt better, yeah. Better. He felt happy about marrying Mary. The word angel means messenger. And in this story, the angel's message is important enough to repeat again and again and again. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 says, The angel said to Joseph, She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Our Bible verse tells us three very important details about the baby Mary and Joseph are expecting. What is the first thing we learn about the baby? Is going to be a boy or a girl? It's boy, male. It's going to be a boy, right. What's the second thing that we learn about the baby? What's his name going to be? His name will be Jesus. Jesus. Oh, yes, it'll be Jesus. And what's the third thing we learn about the baby? Um, that he will um, he will do he, what? He will save people's sins. He will save people from sin. That's right. So let's stand up. We're going to add actions to our Bible verse. So go ahead and follow along at home. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Put yourself in the place of Joseph for a moment. First he has to deal with the news that his wife-to-be is carrying a child. So then what happens? An angel comes to talk to Joseph. Unbelievable. Clearly, Joseph has to get used to the idea that this is no ordinary baby and his life will never be the same. An angel visits Joseph in a dream. Why do you think Joseph didn't just wake up and say, boy, that was some dream. I'll never eat pepperoni pizza before bedtime again. God watched over Mary and Joseph. Even though God had an important plan that Joseph didn't understand at first, so God sent an angel to be with them too. Joseph had to trust that God was watching over him and Mary, even when things seemed a bit confusing. Did you know that God watches over us? Yeah. Yes, everyone does. He's like Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's better than Santa. <laughs> One way that God watches over us is by sending special people into our lives, people who protect and care for us. Think of somebody who watches over you. Who are some people that watch over you? It can be someone who is here with you and you see often, like your mom, dad, grandparents, or teachers, or maybe someone who is, who is no longer with you, like someone in heaven. So, Anthony, who do you think watches over you? Gigi. Gigi, good, great grandma. And how about you? Grammy. Grammy, grandma, that's right. How can you tell that they are looking out for you? How do you think? I can okay. tell that because we're part of their family. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So it's wonderful to know that we have special people watching out for us along with God, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. For our craft today, we are going to make our own angels. This is something you can hang on your tree as a reminder that God is watching over you. There are so many ideas for making angels on Pinterest, but I chose this one because I thought that most people would have the materials at home. To make this craft, you need cupcake liners, a pipe cleaner or Chanel stem, and glue. So to make the angel body, you just need to flatten out your cupcake liner and then fold it on the side about one inch in. And then you can fold the other side about one inch. So it kind of looks like this. And the boys have theirs pre-folded to make it a little easier. Um, to make the angel wings, we actually had silver cupcake um, liners. You fold it in half 
and then you cut out a little notch at the part at the top a little dip in the center so it looks like this so let me just show you the two pieces so that's our folded cupcake liner fold into thirds and then this is the angel wings with the little notch cut out at the top are we supposed to create on them? No, not yet. So to make the head and legs, you're supposed to wind a pipe cleaner around the end of a marker, or I actually used a glue stick to kind of make a little head at the top, and then twist it, and then um, take the bottom part of the pipe cleaner uh, and twist it another little loop at the bottom, about one inch below the first twist. So it kind of looks like that. So what we're going to do is you take that, open this up, and you're going to glue the body of your angel inside. To glue the, um, this side? the angel wings, just put a little glue on the back. Mm -hmm. You can have it up top too. And then glue that to the back of your angel. Is that good? Glue this to the back. Push it down. Okay. Good. There you go. So this is your finished angel. Um, if you want, you could probably add some glitter or some jewels to the wings or to the body. And you can even add a string to the top so you can hang her on your tree. Uh, this week, please send pictures of angels. It can be an angel decoration you have on your Christmas tree, the angel ornament that you just made, um, or maybe an angel that you saw in a book or painting that you like. Here's a picture of um, angels that my mother made in ceramics many years ago. Uh, and every year I take them out at Christmas time and put them in our living room. Uh, so uh, since the bulletin board at church is changing for Christmas, I would love to be able to put some angels on it. Before we finish for today, let's look at this video from Mrs. DePalto talking about our special virtual musical project for Christmas Eve. Bye. Hi, everybody. So good to see you again. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. I know I did, but now Christmas is right around the corner, so we need to get to work right away on this special project that I'm working on. First thing we're going to do is let's practice that song again that we're working on called Go Tell It on the Mountain. Would you just say for me, go, go, tell it, tell it, on the mountain, on the mountain, over the hill, over the hill, and everywhere, and everywhere, go, go, tell it on the mountain, tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born, that Jesus Christ is born. And then there's some verses that have some words. Now, I, the Sunday school kids that know how to read, I included in the email that's being sent to you are all the words, so you can sing along. But preschoolers, even kindergartners, if all you want to sing is those words that I just went over, that would be fine. So let's practice our song. Jesus Christ. 
sure how well I can hear you. You have to make sure when we do this that you sing loud so that the microphone in your uh, your iPhone there or whatever phone you're using can hear you. All right, so let me tell you, give you some clues about how to do this recording. When you've practiced and you can think you can sing it, you're going to need two devices. You're going to need a phone and something else. Now I happen to have an iPad, but you could use a computer, you could use a second phone, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to play the recording that I send you here, and I'm going to record your voice on this one. Now many phones have a recording app, mine did not, I guess it's too old. So I went to the App Store and I downloaded an app called Voice Recorder. And the little picture that came with it looks like a cassette tape recorder. Now kids, I know you won't know what that is, but ask your parents, because they'll know what it is. <laughs> it's something from a long time ago. But all you would need to do is record it on there. Now you may need to do it more than once until you're happy with how it sounds. But when you're finished, included in that letter is my email. You're going to send that recording to me. And then I'm going to mix all the voices of all the different children that sang for us. Now there's now a part two to my project, and that is I need some artwork done, or some pictures drawn. Uh, one thing I want is the word go. So here you can see I've just taken a piece of white paper and I drew the words go on there and I colored it in. You could do fancy it. It doesn't really matter. I would love it. I also need a picture of a shepherd. Uh, oh, baby Jesus. Whoops, I dropped one there. Oh, how about some sheep? Because, you know, we can't have a shepherd without sheep there. And I think that's a picture of a mountain that I dropped on the floor. And I also mentioned some others. Now, notice that I drew these, but included in that letter that's being emailed to all of you, I did go and print some coloring book pages of a sheep and a shepherd. So if you don't think you can draw very good, go ahead and print one of those pictures and color it in. And when you're all finished, you can do one of two things. If you happen to be near the church, you can drop the pictures off with Miss Jeanette in our Christianette office, or take that phone, take a picture of your drawing, and email it to me. And then this is the most important part. Step three, get somebody to take a picture of you. Maybe even singing or drawing, but I need some individual pictures of all the kids in the Sunday school. And all this is going to be put together in a little movie with this song being played in the background. And that is going to be played on Christmas Eve before every single service. And our services are at 5 o'clock p.m. That's our family service at 8.30 p.m. and at 11 o'clock p.m. There will be a little concert of five or six different things, the Sunday school being one of those things performing. So I really hope that you take the time and work on my project with me. I'm so excited to get it done and see what our movie looks like. Just think you might be famous because you're going to be played out there on live stream and everybody can watch you. Uh, and if you have any questions, my phone number, my email are included in that letter. Don't hesitate to call or to email me so I can help you. 
Have a good day and have fun working on my project. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for joining us again today for Virtual Sunday School. Don't forget, if you want a kid's advent calendar or an advent coin box, we have them available in the narthex right outside the doors leading into church. So stop by and pick one up. Let's close with a prayer. Dear God, we know that we are never alone, that you spoke to us through the gift of Jesus. Help us to be a reminder of your constant presence and your never ending love. We know that you watch over us with the love and power of angels so that we can also help those who need us most. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 And bye, food. Bye, everyone. Bye.